Welcome to the Perspective Doctor Podcast, brought to you by Med School Coach. Pre-med and medical students alike are encouraged to tune in each week for tips on how to become a strong med school candidate, gain acceptance into the school of your dreams, and succeed on your journey toward residency and becoming a doctor. Hello, everyone. I am beyond excited today because we actually have our first international guest. We have Dr. Max Chabalala. And I will just give her an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kita. Thank you so, so much for having me. What a wonderful privilege to be here this afternoon. It is afternoon in South Africa. For now, I'm just a girl, an overwhelmed girl who who has been awake for a while now and has been juggling balls that in the air and trying not to drop any balls. It is the nature of the discipline that I chose. Um, And I'm hoping that we are able to finish this interview without any glitches or any interruptions. And, And if we do, apologies, it is the nature of what I do. So I'm just a girl um, and a little bit of background is that I am the last child of three girls born to two teachers. My mom pursued and developed her career in teaching. My dad, however, left teaching because back then in the 1970s, uh, they didn't have a teaching post for him. So he went into a small town that does chrome mining. So completely career change. And the reason why I bring this up is that it is because of men and women that work with my father, worked with my father and my father that I am here today as an obstetrician and a gynecologist. I was put through to medical school by a, a bursary or what you guys call as a scholarship because I was a child of a minor. And we we were afforded this privilege of going to study whatever degree that we wanted. Or Yeah, it is this men and women's blood, sweat and tears that has put me through to school. And the, the, the idea of the sponsorship or the scholarship was that no child of a minor should be left uneducated. And that no child of the minor should go underground, this underground the earth, kilometers and kilometers, unless they want to, unless they want to be minors. And if anything, this uh, scholarship was to say, if a child of a minor ends up in mining, can we look at them being mine owners? So that's my little story. And then, yeah, that's it's minors who have put me through school and I'm eternally grateful and I can never um, repay them. But my, my little way of repaying and saying thank you for putting me through a varsity is to do my best every single day. And my best is not all the time great, but it is my best. And to practice medicine with love, with passion, and most importantly, with reverence. I love that story. And I really appreciate your transparency. I find it so interesting and refreshing. And I really wish that we had some programs like that in the U.S. And and it just shows your passion to give back to the world that gave to you. Mm -hmm. I, I I just find it so fascinating. You, we, we talked about how you got to medical school, but mm-hmm. after um, doing that, can you, can you kind of clarify for the students what is it like to get to medical school and how it's arranged in South Africa um, and is okay. different than the U.S. because typically in the U.S. we do four years of undergrad college and then four years of medical school and then we go on to residency, which is three to seven years. Okay. So our program is completely different from yours. Mm -hmm. So when one finishes their matric, their high school qualification, they can apply to going to medical school and they will require some amount of, and most universities will require some amount of community service, either at hospices or children's home 
during the holidays and our end of year is 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 december so between your the end of your matric and before you start varsity you need to put in some community hours in in the health and science fraternity so to speak and you can go from 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 a high school straight into medical school which our undergraduate it takes about it takes 6 years okay. right 6 years of solid lectures and being in lecture halls and and on your fourth year or or rather third year of of your undergraduate um studies you start venturing into the hospitals and doing a little bit of clinical work it becomes more solidified in your fourth year in your fourth year you end up more in the wards bedside rather than in formal lecture hall so that whole thing takes about 6 years and you come out with a qualification called mbchb so your bachelor of medicine and a bachelor of uh, of surgery and then with that you then are a general practitioner but before you go into practice you do internship yeah. our internship is pro- is is over 2 years and in those 2 years you spend 4 months in various in the major disciplines pediatric surgery of zingani and so forth and after that 2 years then you do community service which is a year and in community service you pick the two disciplines that you have enjoyed and are potentially uh, having interest and would want to pursue so for me it was anesthetics as well as obstetrics and gynae in the in my community service year and only then are you fully cooked doctor so to speak <laughs> in south african terms and you're allowed to go out there and 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 serve the community as an independent practitioner and i went through that same process and after my community service and after spending 6 months in obstetrics and gynecology that's when i decided that i i'm uh, that's what exactly what i'm going to do so i didn't spend time doing after conserve going into independent practice as an uh, medical officer i went straight to specialize at vets and i did obstetrics and gynae wow the process is just so different but it all gets mm. us to the same end result yeah so you mentioned that you were going through the different specialties and you had gotten it down to anesthetics and obstetrics and gynecology what inspired you to make your choice well it chose me to be honest i didn't pick it and i'll tell you why i throughout my undergraduate i thought well i had in mind that i would want a career that allows raising children uh being there at children's schools activities um having a 9 to 5 job type of work mm-hmm. and i thought i was going to do dermatology and i walked into a dermatology clinic and i was like oh goodness we now we're going to finish <laughs> so uh, i i i didn't enjoy it then i thought okay maybe ophthalmology because yeah i thought maybe there's not a lot of emergency ophthalmology at night and i can have a quality of life and i hated it but the day i walked into a maternity unit and i was just a mere third year and it took me a while to acknowledge that i felt at home because it it was op- it was opposite what i had wanted as far as the quality of life and i loved the labor ward i loved the how a woman walks in 2 cm and a couple of hours later we have a healthy mom and a healthy baby i love the pregnancy journey i love the the what the woman's body is able to do and to be part of that it's it's such a privilege so i ended up succumbing to the calling to the to the discipline that has chosen me and i pursued it and i love it and yes i do wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to catch a baby and yes i i take my cell phone to the shower because i need to keep an eye of it ringing i can never be found without battery with the battery low i cannot uh, be found with a at a place where there's no network network coverage i need to be reachable at all times and yeah i love it <laughs> That's awesome and it kind of reminds me of a story with my mentor in medical school who just 
when I was thinking about what I wanted to do, she was like, you just have to find your people. And when you find your people, you mm-hmm. know, it's just like, okay, mm-hmm. I love this rotation. Like, I don't want it mm-hmm. to end. And mm-hmm. I tell a lot of students that, like you said, you had come in thinking you would have liked preferably something like dermatology or something with a more stable lifestyle. But mm-hmm. when you got there, you just didn't feel fulfilled. And it doesn't mean that that's mm-hmm. not a wonderful specialty, but it just mm-hmm. wasn't for you. So I I just love that. So students listening out there, please keep an open mind and you will find your people. At Med School Coach, we know that getting into medical school is hard. In fact, 60% of pre-meds who apply to medical school don't even get accepted. And if you want to get accepted into a top medical school, it's even harder. It's a complicated process, and even students with great grades and MCAT scores get left out. That's why more students than ever are turning to Med School Coach for admissions advising. Our advisors are all physicians and former admissions committee members, so they know exactly what medical schools are looking for. One-on-one admissions advising from Med School Coach makes all the difference. Our expert team will help you develop a game plan, prepare your application, edit your essays, and coach you for interviews. Every pre-med has a story, and we'll help you tell it so you can stand out from the crowd. Visit us online at medschoolcoach.com and use offer code PODCAST10 to save 10%, up to $400 on a Med School Coach admissions advising package. You can achieve your medical school dreams and Med School Coach can help. We started this episode with you giving kind of a little warning that life can get a little crazy and we're just trying to get through the episode in one piece, but we know that life happens. What does a typical day look like for you? That's a very difficult mm-hmm. question because I don't have a typical day. I it, Some days start at three o'clock in the morning. Some days start at one o'clock in the morning. But And I just roll with the flow. The nature of obstetrics and gynae is that it's dynamic. It's rapidly, rapidly changing. You're always on your feet. But... I maybe to, for the listeners, for the benefit of the listeners. So I'm an obstetrician gynecologist in private practice in, in a Johannesburg hospital. And yeah, we, we do about five to 10 deliveries a month per, per, per person, but sometimes we cover colleagues and it can get a little bit much. So I will see page on a good day. I'll arrive at work. Ugh. I started with a run at home, a five-kilometer run. It's very important that I'm able to fit in running in my schedule. That what that's what keeps me sane. So I start with with a run. Then I'm in my rooms seeing women of age group between eighteen and sixty-five. An eighteen-year-old is coming to me looking for contraception advice and. And yeah, basically that and a a a woman in their 30s, they're coming in trying to fall pregnant or are pregnant and right through to menopausal women where we're looking at hormonal therapy for them. And anytime during the day I get interrupted, run to labor ward for somebody who's laboring, run to theater to do a a Caesar and that's how it rolls. And I get home when I get home and, and, I have supper when I have supper. (laughs) That seems like such an exciting day. I mean, it may not seem like that when you're like dead tired and you want to go home, but you're helping so many people from such a large age variety and and just bringing life into the world. So I I find that super fascinating and wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So moving on to our next topic, which is currently one of my favorites. You guys, I have not made this announcement on our podcast before, but Mox and I are both writers and we have a book that we've contributed to called Medicine Woman, which just came out on July 18th. I just want you to take the opportunity to tell us about what your chapter focuses on and and kind of what inspired you to write about it? Sure. Yes. Very exciting times for us. One reviewer said women are overachievers. And yeah, how do we fit in writing in all of this? But when you have to do something, when it's purpose and it's a gift, you will find time. So I just, before I talk about my little chapter, I just want to tell you how I ended up writing and, and so forth. So 
how I ended up writing a chapter in Medicine Women started as a 12-year-old girl child who sat her parents down and said, I wanted to be a writer. But I was too young and I couldn't articulate it properly. And my parents, bless them, they, they didn't know how to nurture that. And I remember I had cut a newspaper advert out of our Sunday newspaper that was advertising a workshop to take children for a write, for a creating writing workshop over the school holidays that were coming. And I delicately cut this little advert and I showed it to my parents and I said, can I please go to this? And they just looked at me and said, what is this? And I said, it's a writing workshop to learn how to write creatively, creative writing. And to put it in what my mom said, was, and she said, which is sort of for saying, you want to write? Write what? And they didn't understand it. But the minute, so, so my desire to write fell on deaf ears and it wasn't supported. But, and I couldn't defend it as a 12-year-old. I didn't know why I wanted to write. I didn't know why I wanted to venture into creative writing. And I didn't even, even know about a career in writing. I just saw this advert and I was drawn to it. But the minute I said to my parents, I want to do medicine, that got approval, that got their attention, and that got their support. And all of a sudden, all energy was invested into me studying medicine, right? And everybody was coming to me for if, if they have wounds for me to dress their wounds. And academically, they thought, well, you're gifted enough, so you must pursue this. And I did. And I have absolutely no regret studying medicine, and I love it. But how did I now come into medicine women and writing medicine women is that, you know, in the career of medicine, you are exposed to a lot. You see women and you see patients going through the most. You see patients dying. You see patients suffering from a terminal illness. You see a whole lot of tragedies. And I found that I needed to write in order to let it all out. Mm -hmm. So in my post-grad studies, after a 36-hour shift or a 24-hour shift, I would get home unshowered, still in my scrubs, still smelling of sweat. And tired as I was, I needed to sit down and write whatever it is that I had experienced or felt just to get it out of the system and put it on paper. And I wrote and I found that only then after I've let it out and put it on paper, I could sleep mm. and rest. If I could, if, it, if I didn't afford myself that, the, the call would just go on. I would, if, if I went to bed and not, and not try to let it out first, the call would go on even in my sleep. And it just becomes a recurring thing. And unfortunately, you know, the, the deep briefing of a medical student is not something that is invested in in medical school. You know, we're just exposed to all these things and we just keep on rolling with the punches. So I found an outlet in writing and I've been writing post-call ever since and it has helped my mental status. And then Medicine Woman came and I thought, oh, what a wonderful opportunity to, to be able to publish this, not only to become a published writer, but to actually say to a medical student, this is what we go through. This is what you will go through. Mm -hmm. And to say to the world, this is what we go through. Underneath those scrubs and that brave face, this is it. And, and, and I'm very grateful for the platform. That's awesome. It's like it's come full circle where you were thinking as a child, like you told your parents, I want to be a writer. This is what I want to do. And then to go through life and, and to take different avenues and, and to show, yes, you can express yourself and, and get things out and be a writer and contribute to society, as well as doing your other things you love, like seeing women and treating them and bringing life into the world. And you can combine them and help inspire others. It's yeah. awesome. At Med School Coach, we know that studying for the MCAT exam can be challenging. 
especially for busy students on the go. That's why our team created MCAT Prep, the only all-encompassing study app built specifically for the MCAT. MCAT Prep by Med School Coach provides student access to extremely high-quality content and a personalized curriculum for free. The app has more than 250 videos, 1,000 flashcards, and 1,000 unique MCAT questions. Plus, MCAT Prep by Med School Coach allows students to create a personalized study schedule and track progress over time. You need every competitive advantage you can get to get into medical school, and now you can put the experts from Med School Coach into your pocket. It's the closest pre-med students can come to a personal tutor without spending a penny. Download MCAT Prep by Med School Coach for free at medschoolcoach.com slash MCAT or download it directly from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. You can achieve your medical school dreams and MCAT Prep by Med School Coach can help. So you just shared so many pearls of wisdom with us and your story. And I'm sure that everyone will want to read your story. We don't want to give away too much, but you can maybe give a, a brief little summary of what your theme is for the chapter. And then afterwards, we'll definitely post a link on the podcast as to where people can purchase the book. Okay. True. I don't know how to do that without spoiling it, but <laughs> my, yeah, my chapter was to, I share a day when I'm in training as a registrar towards Ops and Gynae and I have this difficult case and the outcome is not necessarily all wonderful and glorious, but we soldier on. And the reason I wrote the story was to, one, I needed to have an outlet. And two, was to show you guys behind the stethoscope below that the woman in that scrub, in the scrubs, that brave face that looks at the family and counsels the family. We also go through difficult times with our, uh, uh, with our patients. So I particularly would love the medical students or patient uh, or people interested in studying medicine to look at it and read it. But also, it's not every day that it's like that. So they mustn't be frightened. We have other days that are simple and with just a jubilant outcome. But the reality, I wanted them to see the reality of what we go through. Absolutely. It sounds super interesting and I can't wait to hear the feedback as more people read your chapter. We've had such a lovely discussion and I almost don't want it to end, but all great things have to come to a close and maybe we'll have you back in a few months or so to, to talk about more things. But for now, I want to leave the students with um, any words of wisdom or advice that you have for them as they start their medical journey? This is my closing remarks to the medical student or the prospective medical student. Mm -hmm. and, and you will see the theme in, the, in our book, the theme of, am I good enough? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are good enough. Please put your head low, put it in the work. It is achievable. And the pie is big enough. We do need to hand over the baton to you guys and all the best with your studies. And yeah, the family welcomes you. The, fam the family of medicine welcomes you. And I acknowledge that you've put in the work to get here. And when that self-doubt kicks in, remember this conversation, you're good enough and you're meant to be here. I love that. And, and I have nothing to add. So with that... We'll give you an opportunity to say goodbye. And if anyone has any questions, do you have a social media that they can reach out to? The best, thank you, thank you so much, Kita. The best way to, to find me is an email. I'm not so active on social media mm -hmm. uh, in my professional capacity, but my email address, which is my, first, my second name, mohotreti at gmail.com. Please do drop, drop me a mail. Let's chat. I'm happy to respond. I will not respond immediately. Our time zones are completely different. I know yes. you guys are just waking up. But yeah, I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for coming. And guys, I will see you next week. Have a great day. 
Each episode of the Perspective Doctor podcast is brought to you by Med School Coach. To access articles, videos, webinars, and free tools to help you succeed on your journey toward med school and beyond, visit our website, perspectivedoctor.com. We hope you tune in again next time.